One of the main aspects of Anno 1800 is learning how to manage your trade routes. Now, I do have an entire trade route guide over on the channel and everything, but it is a couple of years old and it's a bit lower quality because I wasn't that great at making my videos back then. And I do drone on and on for a little while. So I thought I'd make a shorter and a little more direct and to the point video uh, with about five things about trade routes that you kind of need to know and that will help you get your trade routes up and running and working properly. So let's jump in with our first one. So one of the biggest things about trade routes that's going to be super critical and be very, very important to your continued success with managing your trade routes is understanding trade route travel times. Now, this is something that is available in the game. What you can do is click on your trading post and click on the statistics button down here. This will bring you to the storage tab. And what you're looking for is right here under all goods, you'll see trade routes. If you click that down on whatever trade route you need to see the time on, what you're looking for is the difference between all of these right here. As you can see, I have fish that was picked up 28 minutes ago, 19 minutes ago, 9 minutes ago, 1 minute ago. So it's around a 10 minute, roughly 9 to 10 minute turnaround time for this trade route, picking up fish and taking it from one island to another. Now, how is this information useful to you? I know a lot of people are always trying to figure out exactly how much they need to be taking back and forth to an island and everything. Well, that's actually really, really easy. Now that we know this right here, all we have to do is go to the island that is needing the goods, in this case, fish at the moment. That's going to be Kerner's Landing for me. We go under production and we look and see how much they need per minute. We can see that it, they need one ton per minute of fish. And it is taking this island about... A roughly you know 10 minutes on average to bring the fish back and forth i need to be bringing over a minimum of 10 fish per trip since i am bringing over 50 on the trade route i'm bringing over enough now you could micromanage this if you wanted to and set it at 10 but i would go ahead and just set it at 50 and the reason being is because of minimum stock the next thing i want to talk about so minimum stock is your internal trade routes and how much you want to keep in stock on the island. Now you can set this however you want. Uh, I normally like to do at least 25 in the farmer worker stage and then go up to 50 in the, around the artisans. And then from there, I kind of scale it and everything. So if you're moving goods from one island to another, but you need to keep some of those goods on that island, use the minimum stock. I'm going to set this for 50. What this means is that trade route will take everything over 50 tons in the warehouse over to that other island and drop it off. I'll always be able to keep at least 50 in the warehouse. So that is how trade route travel times will work for you. You figure out the time between the routes just by looking again at this little button right here. And you look at your times going right here again, about 10 minutes from me. You multiply the 10 minutes by the consumption that the island needs. In this case, for me, it's one. And that number is how much minimum needs to be dropped off on the trade route. So it is that simple. How do you know when you need another ship on the route or a better ship on the route? Simple. It's if it ever goes over the amount of cargo that the ship can hold. If you're using a clipper, a clipper can hold up to 200 tons of goods. If you need more than 200 tons of a particular good, then you need to either add another clipper, or if you're in the engineer phase, build a cargo ship and add that to the route. And then if that needs more, just keep adding more ships to it, basically. Don't worry about trying to space them out and have them timed perfectly in between it. Trust me, doesn't matter. Add more ships or upgrade the type of ship if you need it to be more than the cargo space of the one ship that you have on the route. It's that simple. So next up, we're going to talk about loading and unloading various goods on an island and transporting them on a multi-island route. Now, what I mean by that is I've got three islands here. I've got Grace, I've got Kerner's Landing, and I've got Ludendorp over here. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. New, New Ludendorp. How about that? Now, New Ludendorp could use some fish. Now, fish is a weird example because, yes, I can build fish anywhere, but it's an arbitrary example, okay? So let's say I want to take the fish from Gracie and supply that fish to both of those islands. Well, 
what I want to do is I want to add new Ludendorp over to this. Now, I could also unload the fish here, but it's going to unload all 50 here, and then it's not going to have anything for the next part of the route until Kerner's Landing's warehouse fills up with fish. So what I can do is I can go over to Kerner's Landing and set a minimum stock. We know that we need at least 10 tons from the example before uh, within the 10 minute time period. So let's say we just keep a minimum stock of let's just say 25. We'll use that as a first figure and see if it works. We'll set that minimum stock at 25. We're gonna go back under our trade routes, We're gonna add in new Ludendorff, whatever it's called. Now, he's gonna go from Grace to Kerner's Landing. And now he's gonna drop off 50 fish or however much he possibly can. But then I'm gonna tell him to load the fish back up and then unload it again at new Ludendorff. And that's it, we're done, that easy. The minimum stock feature right here is going to ensure that I only pick up anything over 25 and I take the rest of it to new Ludendorff and then we'll hit accept. Now what you just have to do is let the route run at least two or three times and go check all of your timers like we talked about in the first part and make sure that your stocks that you're dropping off and your minimum stocks is enough for everything. That's all you gotta do, it's that easy. Just like the first part, it's not complicated, it's not difficult. You just check your timers and your production values between the multiple islands, set your pickup and drop-offs within the same slot, and go from there. And if you find any of this video helpful at all, do me a big favor and leave a like and a comment down below. If you have not already, subscribe to the channel for more Anno 1800 content. I know it's a little cheesy to say, but it does help the channel out tremendously, and I cannot do this without you guys' support, so big, big thanks for everything so far. So this next little tip of mine kind of has multiple parts to it in a way. Now let's take a look at our trade route here again. Now this trade route is going to work perfectly fine as is. It's going to be great, I'm not going to have any issues out of it, it will function just like this. However, eventually at New Ludendorff, I might fill up on fish, and then the uh, trade route will actually just keep overflowing, and eventually the ship will be full of fish. It will just be absolutely full of fish eventually. What you can do is set one of the neutral traders. That's going to be Archie, Kahina, Eli in the Old World, or Anne, one of the pirates, if you have a trade agreement with her. You could do that there. You can do Isabel or Jean, the pirate in the New World, again, if you have trade agreement with him. In the Arctic, you could do this with this, the Inuit, uh, Kumak. And in Embesa, you can do this with Katima. So what you can do is set a final destination on the trade route to go to any of these neutral traders, usually just whoever's closest on the trade route, and unload the goods to them. That's going to sell any excess goods. So now any excess fish I have left over on the trade route is going to go and be sold off to the neutral traders. That way you can make a little cash. Eventually, once your warehouses fill up, you could unload the excess goods and just go ahead and sell the excess. And it's fine. Make a little money off of it. Now, this little thing is actually going to come in really handy if you were to do something like this. Now, if I did not have Eli on this particular route like this, what's going to happen is eventually all of this is going to start spilling over. I will eventually get fish filling up in all of these cargo slots right here, and the trade route will break down because it won't be able to pick up work clothes anymore. And this is just a natural function of how the trade routes work. It's just, it's just one of those things that's going to happen. They will break down eventually like this, and you will get fish overflowing. Now, there's two things you could do. You could use discard cargo. Uh, that just dumps the cargo overboard, and it just floats in the water for about 10 minutes, and then it disappears. Easy enough. Or... You could do like we did a minute ago and go to Wormways Prison or whoever else you want to and sell the goods. You don't need to pick anything up. We don't want to pick up any excess. We actually do want the storage on the very last part of the trade route to fill up. And then the excess that cannot ever be unloaded will go and be sold. Again, makes you a little bit of money, keeps everything running smoothly, and you don't have to worry about any of your storages ever completely filling up, and you're going to make some money off of it. I know some people love to have their storage buildings completely full and have, you know, see 5,000 of whatever, but it's just good sitting there doing nothing for you. 
you know, especially early game, you need money. You're really, really crushed for, you're really, really cramped for cash. So doing things like this to sell excess goods off on a trade route at the end of it is a really, really good way to make some money. So another big question I see a lot is which ship should I use for a route? Now in the base game, there are basically four types of trade ships. There's the clipper, the schooner, and the cargo ship. There's also the Great Eastern. If you do not have the Research Institute from Land of Lions DLC, then the Great Eastern is available one time after you finish the World's Fair. You'll get a quest from Archibald Blake to get a permit to give you one Great Eastern, and that is it. If you have the Research Institute, you can research permits to build more Great Easterns. If you have the Passage DLC, you have access to airships, specifically one type of airship. And then if you have Empire of the Skies, you have a smorgasbord of airships you can build but we're just going to talk about the four basics and i know i keep saying four but there's only three on the map because the fourth one is a charter route and we'll talk about charter routes specifically in just a second but let's talk about these three guys right here first your three basic types of trade ships now they all actually are useful even the little schooner is very very useful now obviously the cargo ship is going to be your main hauler this is going to be your main ship for going between regions, for hauling your high consumption goods, your coffee, your rum, your chocolates, all the cigars, all that kind of stuff from the new world coming into the old world. This is the ship you're going to want to use for that when you get access to it and your consumption starts really, really ramping up on a lot of those goods in the engineer and investor phases. The Clipper is going to be your, I actually like to consider it kind of my workhorse a lot of times. Yes, the cargo ship is amazing and I use it for a lot of my big routes, but for some routes where it's just between two islands and it's just transporting a certain amount of goods that I'm never going to need a lot of, I don't need to waste the expenses on a cargo ship when a Clipper will be just fine for it. If the route never has a need for more than 200 tons within the time frame of the route, just use a clipper. I see so many people, as soon as they unlock the cargo ship, they replace all their clippers with cargo ships, and cargo ships are very expensive in comparison to a clipper. And it's just not necessary, really. There's no need to replace your entire fleet of clippers with steam cargo ships just because you unlock them. If the, cargo, if the clipper is doing the work, then it's perfectly fine. Upgrade it when you need to. And that comes, and that brings us to the little schooner. The little bitty schooner here is actually a fantastic ship. It is great for transporting uh, basic small materials between a couple of islands. I really like to use them in the new world for transporting stuff like bricks around to the islands I'm getting ready to work on. I don't want to have to build obreros and have clay pits all over my islands and have to build up an obrero population and everything to support multiple brick factories and clay pits and stuff like that. Instead, I can just set up one island in a new world with multiple clay pits and brick factories on it and then use a couple of clippers to move some construction materials around. I can use the schooner on a small route between two islands that I just need maybe a few hops brought around on. The schooner is actually a really, really versatile little ship for those simple, quick, easy routes that you're not ever going to need a lot of stuff being moved around on or just temporarily have a few things moved around. So using the right ship for the job is actually really important. And eventually you may phase out a lot of your clippers and schooners and replace them with cargo ships, but you don't have to do it right away. If those other ships will work, just go ahead and keep using them or make some more of them and use those. And from an aesthetic point of view, I kind of like the sailing ships a little bit more. And I like to see a variety of ships sailing in and out of my harbor and everything. So don't go overboard building a bunch of steamships when you don't really need them. Keep those sailing ships around. They actually are useful and you can still use them if you still, if the route will still support them. And that brings us to the last one, the charter route. I know so many people always ask, what good are charter routes? I don't know why they're any good. So charter routes are a little unique, okay? Charter routes can only haul one type of good 
between two islands only, and it can only support up to 80 tons. That's it. It can only support up to 80 tons. Now, the charter route is a little more costly than a schooner. It is 50 cost, but you do get three charter routes for free, okay? And that's free is that influence cost. You get three free influence charter routes before they start costing you five influence each. So why would you ever use a charter route over a schooner? And honestly, the answer is you usually won't ever use a charter route over something like a schooner. If you need a route this basic, just use a schooner. However, you might not have schooners available when you need to get the route up and running. So a charter route can be a good temporary route, essentially, until you have your schooners built, until you have some clippers built, and you can actually start moving stuff. Charter routes are very slow. They are slightly slower than a schooner. They carry the least amount of goods for a trade ship in the game. Even a schooner can carry 100 tons of goods, whereas this is only 80. Now, they are cheaper than a clipper, so they're kind of a step between schooners and clippers. The one thing you never want to do with charter routes is to go between regions. Use these only for your interregional, in, interregional or intra, inter, intra, whichever it is, the your routes in the islands within the same region. You know what I mean? Only use them for that. Don't try to do a charter route for rum between the old world and new world. You will always run out of rum. You will be scratching your head, trying to figure out what you've done wrong. And what you've done wrong is use charter routes for trying to haul high value goods. Never, ever, ever do that. So I always take advantage of the no influence cost of the first three and use those for some basic routes and everything. But beyond that, I won't ever use charter routes for anything else. Always use at least a schooner or better, but you could use these three free ones for something simple and everything else. So that's really the only purpose charter routes have. They're very inefficient. You're not going to be able to supply your high consumption goods like coffee, rum, things like that with a charter route, it just can't hold enough. So make sure you're using your actual better ships like clippers and cargo ships for those types of goods. All right, and that's it guys. I just wanted to make a more compact and direct video about trade routes and everything else because I do see a lot of questions still about trade routes and how to set them up and how they work and how you need to do different things with them. There is a lot more to trade routes. So if you want some more uh, in-depth droning on about trade routes, uh, the video is linked down in the description below for that. So give that a check if you are interested. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.